Hi, you're with Julian on the Brown Note and a review of the debut album by Radiohead side project The Smile, consisting of half of Radiohead. Um, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Tom York and Johnny Greenwood for the first time, I think, in a project together. Um, Tom York's done solo stuff over the years, like Eraser, which I haven't really been blown away by. I haven't really found it that compelling. Um, moody, synthy, um, just not really that interested in, in his solo stuff. The last album was, I thought, a bit more compelling, but... It tends to drift, it's kind of like I feel like he'd make all Radiohead music like that and it would drift along in that pocket, uh, which isn't the most interesting stuff they've done by a long chalk. Johnny Greenwood, uh, the muso of Radiohead, has a well-established career as a film scorer with many a, an acclaimed score to his name. So he's um, he's probably, I guess combining the two is kind of interesting, but they've added a drummer. Uh, from the Sons of Kemet, uh, called Tom Skinner, who's been in lots of um, muso bands. Um, I must admit, uh, yeah, I'm, I am a Radiohead fan from back in the day. I think from my iron lung, because I kind of didn't like them being from Oxford. I felt they were rivals to my favourite band, Ride, at the time. <laughs> Um, and that whole creep era I wasn't into, and Pablo Honey wasn't a great album, but obviously since then it's gone quite well. Um, the only blip for me really was a, a two-year period where I just boycotted them for playing Israel. I uh, wasn't very impressed with Tom York's very Nick Cave-like response to the um, cultural embargo on Israel, uh, so I wasn't very happy with that. But since then... They've had two late period masterpieces uh, in Rainbows and A Moonshaped Pool. Just absolutely spectacular variations on what they can do. Um, and King of Limbs is probably the only real misfire for me. So I wasn't that thrilled by greeting this album. Um, I did say it was a, a light for attracting attention. Like a moth, perhaps? So I was absolutely shocked by how riveting and exciting this project is. It is absolutely superb and exciting. I didn't expect it to be exciting. I expected it to be wan and wafty and moody, but it's thrilling. It's great. Um, the opener, the same. Got this sort of sci-fi strobe synth going on uh, and this little heartbeat uh, percussion in the background. Pretty unadorned, but not for the first time on the album. Uh, I was reminded of the track Like Spinning Plates from Amnesiac, which uh, is a... Amnesiac's my favourite Radiohead album. Um, I think it's the most undervalued Radiohead album. I think it's one where every track seems to have been refracted from the same prism of light. Now, that was pretentious. Where every track seems to inhabit its own space in a wider album. It's got this sort of metallic, melancholy feel to it. Um, anyway, the, that comes up quite a few times. They seem to cherry-pick moods and sort of motifs musically from other parts of their catalogue. One of the um, styles that they go back to a lot on this comes out with track two, The Opposite, which is, this is some of the greatest white funk since the Krautrock legends can at their peak in the sort of early 70s, uh, which they do with these really sort of angular, slippery uh, riffs on bass and guitar and arguably a better drummer than Radiohead. I'm not, not sure how many times you have sort of sat back and thought, I thought the drumming and bass on that Radiohead track were amazing. I'm not sure that I have that much. Um, whereas here you certainly know it's a drummer. Uh, and also Johnny's riffs, um, he develops them really well throughout this album. In fact, I'll go as far as to say, not only uncomfortably would this have been a worthy follow-up to a moon-shaped pool and heralded as an exciting new triumph, it's almost like they remade King of Limbs. Instead of it being like a 6 out of 10, they remade it as a 9 out of 10. And they also do a, a little bit of rocking out. I wish they'd do that more, to be honest, because um, the third track, You Will Never... Is the hardest and most aggressive 
thing that I've heard them do since um, probably like Hail to the Thief era. Uh, Panavision, again, we get back into one of the main parts of this album, which is how beautiful Tom York's singing on it is. Something that he sometimes feels to shy away from a lot. Here it's really prominent. He does all his falsetto on the ballads. Again, Pyramid Song came up. Uh, the Smoke, White Funk again. Um, but one thing I would say is that the first half of the album isn't as good as the second half. So <clears throat> I was very impressed by these tracks. But um, Speech Bubble sort of gets gets things going a little bit more for me with this sort of... Again, and these things got this like underwater vibe and that came up. And a sort of wistfulness and... And he's also the album that is most influenced by Talk Talks, Laughing Stop, and Spirit of Eden, those two mas essential masterpieces. But it was a, thi a thin thing where things really kicked off, track seven. Um, the funkiest one yet, um, really well developed riffs, and the most complex co uh, composition so far. And it, and it started a run of endlessly great songs from that point on. Open Floodgates, uh, again, Pyramid Songy. Uh, another high point, another complex one, a uh, very melodic album, like rather than punishing. Uh, it's not a punishing, I mean you can expect to be punished by these people, but it's actually really melodic. Um, and then Free in the Knowledge gets into this like Roger Waters sort of acoustic animals era political strum. All the lyrics are very sort of post-1984, post-dystopian. But they're a bit didactic in that they're just slogans. I'm not sure how great the lyrics are. Some of them do stick out a little bit. Uh, look at all the pretty lies on hairdryer with a, a memorable motif. Um, but they're not that interesting, I don't think, lyrically. The singing is great and the lyrics are not so much. Um, very much just sort of like, you know, we're in the modern world. Look at the society in which we live. Um, but yeah, free the knowledge without acoustic strum. I thought I opened out the uh, sonic palette quite a lot with gorgeous falsetto singing and um, waving the white flag. Uh, again, it's a, the abstract sloganing on it kind of works at times, but I didn't sort of feel that it really brought a cohesive narrative to the lyrics on the album. And the last track, skating on skirting on the surface, is um, the longest track, but. It's such a beautiful, stately, elegant piece of music. Cascading riffs, beautiful singing. So overall, this was a fantastic project. Um, much more exciting to me than Tom York's solo albums or Johnny Greenwood's um, highly acclaimed film work. Sometimes I feel like they do indeed make music for themselves a little bit too much. Um, but the addition here of that really driving fun funky drummer and those very slippery, articulate riffs from Johnny Greenwood, I'm guessing, and Tom York's amazing singing. Uh, I really thought this was, you know, this would have been a great Radiohead album, and I wonder how the you know, marriage breakup's going, because they kind of got a, a prettier drummer, a, a drummer that was capable of a bit more than their standard um so great album um the only flaw for me is well lyrics not really adding up to march as far as the cohesion of a narrative goes but mainly the fact that the um from track seven on it's just flat out masterpiece so the first tracks uh aren't quite as strong still terrific album the smile a light for attracting attention eight and a half out of ten